This is GA Embedded here on Ball Sully, where we bring you a review of all the championship. Every Monday throughout the summer, we're here a day early this year, this week, because the Tyrone are all Ireland football champions for the fourth time. They've beaten Mayo in the final 214 to 15 points yesterday. We said we'd jump in a day early, get this done on a Sunday so you wouldn't be waiting around for your analysis. I'm delighted to say that we are joined today by uh, Darren O'Sullivan, who's with us all the time, and by former Mayo manager Stephen Rochford. Later on, we're going to speak to Morris Brosnan and to Mark Farrelly, uh, the old podcast group, back together again to, to delve in a little bit deeper. But lads, uh, Stephen and Darren are with us now. Stephen, uh, former Mayo manager, of course, You've been here twice before um, where those boys are t- this morning. I don't know, what's the Sunday in this case, normally a Monday morning, like after an All-Ireland final when it goes, you're, you're in a position to know it better than almost any of us. Yeah, well, you know, uh, naturally it's, it's, it's very draining, like emotionally, uh, building yourself up for the game. Um, you're, you're, you're as flat as a pancake. Um, a lot of the what ifs, the maybes that are that are that are sort of going through your your your, your head, and um, and you know that um, it's going to be you know it's going to be a long winter reflecting and and you know building yourselves back up for for for, for the for, for a new campaign and um, club championship coming will, will will assist in that. But I think the boys are being spared um, uh, with with sort of no homecoming or or, or no sort of acknowledgement in in that way and. So far as um, a gathering, um, COVID have, have done them a favour in that sense. But um, yeah, it's 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 a difficult morning, um, and you know the the experience of the of the of the years gone by will will have prepared a number of them as regards how they feel. But but um, it's a, it's a very very difficult and and in some ways can be can feel a bit lonely. Um, the 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 position you're in this morning. Mm. As a fan, compared to as when you're involved in the team, there's there is this kind of like heartache of Mayo fans. It's eleven finals in thirty three years. It's an unbelievable record to even make that amount of finals, but to not win any at this stage. Plus, it's like six in the last ten. I just feel that there's this sense of I don't, I I can't even describe what it might be for the fans. But then you look at the players who've been in six, seven actual matches, but six All Ireland finals, like Aiden Lee Keegan um uh kevin mclaughlin are you know those boys pretty well are they the type that would feel it as obviously they feel it but are they the type that would kind of like spend a week or two kind of saying jesus never again how do we keep doing this to ourselves or are they immediately on how are we going to win this next year yeah i i think they'll i think they'll they'll take a bit of downtime i don't think they'll i don't i i don't think they'll start thinking about next year uh just now um, I think maybe some of the younger lads um, might might get into that space, and that's fine. A couple of the older lads will 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 know the the, the necessity to to switch off, have a little bit of downtime. Um, no doubt that they'll, they'll do a bit of socialising together or in in, in some of their, their own friend groups uh, over the next couple of days and try and unwind and put it behind them. Um, but I think you know the, 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 there's definitely going to be a sense of not just disappointment, you know, regret and, and, and missed opportunity. And, you know, I think, you know, out of, out of some of the more other recent finals, um, we'd have probably felt that we, we, we gave a better account of ourselves than we did yesterday. Yeah. And and um, sometimes when you're in that, you, you're more accepting or you're you're able to pro, uh, process the, the, the defeat and, and, and look to, to move on. But I think as James says, uh, in his aftermath, you know there there is still a, a fair amount of youth within that 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 squad, and their sort of optimism and 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 their taste for for getting to the big days hopefully will give the team um a, a bounce again come late November and into December. That's interesting though. Sorry, I I, I do want to move on to Throne and we'll come back to Mayo, but like that, are you said like so in say in 2016, 2017, kick of the ball, you know little look here and there really brilliant performances in the three matches over the two years and it didn't go your way is that that's in some ways easier to take than you know it being kind of over 10 minutes out and, and possibly not giving as good an account of yourself even though you get that much closer it is actually easier to process well well i think you know in in any of these contests you know the, the thing that you ask from the group and and, and players will ask themselves is they give their 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 best is in their best performance. They're obviously 
their um you know their efforts uh will have been undoubted but when 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 so many of the group don't perform to their level, that level of regret will certainly uh, stay with them. Um, and it's not easy to get back to finals. Um, uh, I know that there's a potential championship change and back doors may, 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 may be back in, um, you know, be on the table again next year. But it's damn hard to get to All-Ireland finals. Like, you know, um, even, you know, with, with Dar- Darren will tell you, it's good of, and, and, and a talented crop that, that, that Kerry have. You know, maybe what one one or two All Ireland finals now in the last you know uh, ten years, maybe three All Irelands, maybe in the last ten years, and that's a really talented group. So I've had six in that ten year period. You know, like you, you're just you, you know that it's you know that we've gone through a bit of a purple patch and getting to those uh, finals, um, but really, you know that the. I don't I don't I don't I don't feed into the the, the idea of curse or any of that sort of nonsense. Um, but when, when, when you when you sit back and you reflect, and they'll do dumb time with with the video and reviewing it, they'll know that the, that that not enough of them came anywhere near their 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 level of performance. And still, you know, you look at certain elements of the game where you'll say there was there was the opportunity when the game. Obviously, the penalty is one, but there were, there were other other opportunities, and and those boys will have serious regrets. Um, I think. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, months. Mm, absolutely. Darren, on to, like, on Tyrone, you tipped Mayo early on in the year, actually, like before the semi-finals even, and I know you kind of been over and back, but straight after the Kerry match, it changed your mind because there was something in that performance and I suppose just how how much they kind of like just went for Kerry, I suppose, in, in all aspects of, of, of the pitch that made you think that actually this is this this is their year. They did actually, I, I, there's some argument on Twitter and stuff as to whether it was that good a performance by Tyrone, but from my point of view, is like they did everything right yesterday. You know, they they were ready for everything that Mayo had to offer and they provided their own, you know, spark going forward as well. Yeah, and like that, I suppose, initially after the semi-final, I had gone from tipping Mayo to tipping Tyrone and then I watched the game back and I, I, from a Kerry point of view, obviously, I was looking at it going, geez, the chances they missed Mm. I was just shocked at how many they'd actually created and I was there on another day they could have won comfortably and that tipped me back to Mayo and I went with my gut which was telling me all year that this Mayo mm. team I just had a weird feeling from um, and maybe I underestimated Tyrone going into the game maybe I thought they won't have it as um, they won't be as fired up as they were for Kerry obviously there's that rivalry there but from the get-go yesterday they just first thing first i think we have to say they have 15 footballers on the team and that's exactly what they are they're footballers very rarely a team of footballers work as hard and as well as a unit as they do like i think they are the only team that have half backs and half hours and literally you could play either on either side of the pitch they just do such a job there um and they did the same thing yesterday i think they they forced mayo in narrow um, they bottled them up. I actually thought Mayo were creating chances and a bit similar to Kerry weren't taken, but Tyrone's transition from back to front was incredible. Um, Morgan, especially in the first, he, he's like a sweeper playmaker. Mm. Um, I think McCurry had a great goal chance in the first chance or in the first half and Henley made a great save, but like Morgan uh, came out, took a ball that like he had no right, even right to be there, carried out the field and with an incredible long range pass went long into McKenna, it went over McCurry, read it. So I just think that for a team that are in their first year of transition after the Mickey Hart year, what they've done this year is just phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Morgan's kickouts, uh, Stephen, is something that I've been thinking about a lot on his, his general play as well, like in, in the kind of build. So, so much of what Tyrone did well started off with Niall Morgan just making the right decision and some of the long kickouts in particular that set up some chances after chances and then eventually they... They, McCurry's goal came from that but like he was criticised after the Kerry games you know I possibly unfairly for maybe kicking it down David Moore and showed sometimes but it's about the process with Niall Morgan and about what they're trying to do rather than worrying about what his kickout stats are and so on and so forth and I think that came to fruition yesterday didn't it? Yeah I, I think to be honest uh, people looking at, at the Kerry game and, and pointing the finger at Niall Morgan was pure rubbish to be mm-hmm. honest um, I think firstly I thought 
you know, at, at different times, you know, in the past, um, Nile Morgan might have been a bit um, uh, rattled, you know, when, when he made an error, something that goes over the line or a missed pass, something. His very first kick out, he didn't get it outside the 21. Um, but from then on, he was impeccable. Um, his his long distribution, both from, from, from hand and from foot, um, was well orchestrated. Um, they, like, I mean, the, the difference, two, two things were, 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 were different uh, than the Kerry game. And I was, I was at the Kerry game, so I could see this, that maybe you don't pick up on television, is that um, the, the, the Kerry team, including the Shane Ryan and Thomas Sullivan, were pushed up to their own 45. The space just wasn't there um, for, 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 for Niall Morgan um, as often as you'd like. And Kerry absolutely cleaned them out and breaking ball. That didn't happen yesterday. Um, there was an early early phase of play in front of the Hogan stand. He went long. Mayo had three players under the breaking ball, and still Kennedy got it got got it out to. Um, I think it was Kieran McGeary that was was breaking up the line. Um, and I think Niall Morgan yesterday was 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 man of the match for for, for me. Um, I thought his just the way he played. He played as a sweeper, as as Darren said there. That that one that he came out won, drove up to the forty five, spotted McKenna. Um, you know, at the at the edge of the D, and just lurried it in um, accurately. Like it wasn't just a, a hidden hope. Um, it, it, you know, he, he spotted that there was a potential mismatch there, and Conor McKenna is actually quite good in the air. Um, but I thought he was, I thought he was very good. And even on the short kickouts, when, when they got away, they they got a they got a play like a, if they went to um, a, a Peter Hart, they got a Kieran McGeary on it, and then it was back to to Niall Morgan as the as the Tom Brady. Uh, Esque of, of of Tyrone and and he just managed their their, their phase of play on, the, on 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 all the restarts and um, I thought I thought he was actually super yesterday and probably you know has has probably got ahead now of, of Robbie Henley for that um, all star as well. Mm, yeah, possibly. Yeah, and just an unbelievable performance. You mentioned he might have been man of the match. Aaron, there's a lot of contenders there with Connor Myler. You know, Darren McCurry played so well, but you know, and and McGeary etc. But I'm just looking at like. The Tyrone midfield, in a weird way, I think has been almost underestimated this year. We've been rolling all stars all year. They've never even come up in conversation. You know what I mean? We've had the Kerry lads, we've had Matthew Ruan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But Kennedy and Kilpatrick yesterday, I thought, just really laid down a marker of like, hold on a second, we're a big, big part of this team too, and they're like an old school mid midfield partnership in a way, really, aren't they? Yeah, and I was actually a bit surprised by my top Mayo would have the edge there. Um especially after I suppose the Kerry game was fresh in the head and I was look I was surprised by how good they were to be honest because for me Matthew Ruan was in running for player of the year didn't think he really got into the game yesterday and that was all down to the Tyrone midfield I thought they dominated that area as Stephen said against Kerry the breaking ball Tyrone were non-existent in that game but yesterday even when there was two and three Mayo players around the place and Mayo are one of the hungriest team around it's not very often you beat them for breaking ball and Tyrone had that just, and I think that like that they, re- they rectified where they'd gone wrong against Kerry, and the two midfielders there were their key to that, and two big physical boys, like you said, a bit old school, two big men around the middle, and uh, no, they were exceptional yesterday. I think Mick, just on that, I think uh, you know you're right. Like Con Kilpatrick has come in this year and has been really below the radar, but it goes back to an earlier point that that you've made is that this Tyrone team is about the sum of the parts, and. You know, if if you look at maybe, you know, a, a David Moore or Jack Barry or or or, or a Jermot and, and Matty Ruan, typically they come up against opposition that have let them play and let them to take the terms. You go up against Dublin, you play your way and we play our way, and um, uh, that just wasn't ever going to be the case yesterday. And you know, I got I, I I've seen those guys up close in some of the Ulster Championship games, um, and. Like Con Kilpatrick is a very, very good player. Um, isn't going to isn't going to be a Sean Kavanagh uh, um, element for for throwing them in the field, but he's absolutely a workhorse. And he's you know Connor Myler has obviously got the label now of being uh, um, a serious man marker and and a team player. But Con Kilpatrick um, is 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 just coming in next to him, and he did a um, you know a phenomenal job on on Matty Ruan. Didn't let him into the game. And that bore out in in in, in what, what what happened with Maddie at the tail end, bore out of pure frustration. Mm, absolutely, yeah. Um, which wasn't great to see, unfortunately. It was a, like a, a 
unfortunate way to end such a great season for Rwan. I think still probably bring an all-star for him. But the Tyrone defence is just an interesting one because there's been so much talk of their evolution and how they're attacking more. And you see Pora Campsey kicking an amazing point again yesterday. Uh, Darren, two points, actually, I think. And um, But they've conceded one goal since they went down to that match that we've talked about many times in Clarny where they ship six. These lads are still defending brilliantly. And for all the chances Mayo created yesterday, it's funny, we should talk about Mayo's poor execution a little bit more in a minute when we're going to go back to them. But it's because Tyrone were putting them under huge amounts of pressure and they were getting those blocks in and they were stopping the... They were making maybe the, the, the wrong shooters take the shots and so on and so forth. Really, really good defending all the way through, I thought. Yeah, and like that, I suppose, that game in Killarney it was just, I remember watching and going, this isn't the Tyrone team I've ever seen before. It was very much a one-on-one, and you mark your man, and that's it. Where it was a big eye-opener to them, I think. Um, if anything, I'd probably, they'd probably watch that game back over and over and over again. Very rarely since that game has a player been left one-on-one. The Tyrone defence, they, they are team defence. They, they go one-on-one. But there's bodies filtering back to help you yeah. out. It's a, like it's amazing, really. They just they work so hard, and it sounds it sounds stupid. It sounds very simple, but that they just work hard. But I think it's their intelligence. They sense danger. I I've always felt that. Sorry, I keep going back to Kerry. They're not doing this, but that they don't sense the danger quickly enough. This Tyrone team sense danger. They don't care who's whose man they're on. If they see danger somewhere, else, they're going to that. And that's, like Stephen said, it's about to sum of the parts. It's very mm-hmm. hard to actually pick out just individuals with Tyrone. They do it as a team. And as I said earlier, there are 15 fantastic footballers. But that's not what we're going to talk about. They just work harder than anyone else. In the, and it sounds bit silly, really, like, oh, they work hard. They, they're intelligent guys. They see danger. Very rarely you see a guy left one-on-one because there is somebody else cutting across the field because he sees the danger. And I think that's what got them to win. That's why Kerry caught the chances or missed chances. And that's why I think uh, Mayo missed chances so many of them yesterday. Yeah, it can't be a coincidence everyone's missing the chances. But Darren, like Darren's point there, Stephen, is like that, you know, they actually aren't going sweeper. I don't think there was a sweeper. Definitely not for the first half yesterday. Anyway, not a, not a full-time sweeper. They are one-on-one, but it never feels like they are. And is that like how much of that is instinct and desire and how much is it is really, really well organized uh, defensive coaching that you know how to swarm at the right times? Yeah, I think I think firstly on the Kerry National League game, I think that's I don't think that I genuinely never felt that that was a reflection of where Tyrone were in their season anyway. Um, I thought they, they, they conceded three goals off the kickouts in that game. And I think, you know, when, when they came to be Kerry again, uh, obviously a few weeks ago, they changed up what that plan was. There was very little going short and they were they were getting their defensive shape set up. I think in relation to, you know, their ability to be able to dovetail between uh, a sweeper um, or a plus one and man on man, obviously they had Niall Morgan able to step out um, and, and play that at times. Frank Burns would slot in, but they have technically some really, really good defenders. Um, you know, Peter Hart has has, you know, become, you know, not necessarily the guy that's had to put them up on his back and carry them, um, but he's gone back in. He's playing his role at wing back or centre back, man marking, um, and he's also contributing um, up for- front. Like he's scored in each of their championship games this year, I think, which is a, you know, it's really uh, a sign of a guy that has really enjoyed his football, that he's been able to do his defensive work really, really well, get up the field, um, and, and contribute at the far end, along with, along with Hamsey and McGeary and Myler at different times. They've had a, just a great fluidity of knowing when without the ball, we're, 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 we're all defenders. And that, 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 like, I don't mind that to sound that we'll all get back inside the 45. Um, and when we have the ball, we're all trying to create the opportunity to get forward. And just to pick up on one point as well for, 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 for Darren is that he's, he's, he's nailed it on the head in relation to these guys, when they find themselves in one-on-one positions and they get breached, it's instinctively into the team defending then. There's somebody there willing to bail you out because they know when you get caught the next time, Peter Hart is going to stand in or McNamee is going to stand in. or And they got a, they showed really this season a great template for, for teams coming that you know the team defence isn't necessarily all about getting 12, 13 bodies inside the 45. It can be you know, maybe a plus one or man on man. But if he gets breached, everyone's back putting out the fire. 
was so evident in the semi-final, I think, especially, Darren, we talked about it a good few times, that there was the amount of times that you, your instinct was like, go on here for Kerry, because that's what it would have been almost in any other match. But before you know it, there was just somebody closing down that space after the original man had been beaten. They're just so good at it. Like. Yeah, and I suppose the management team have to take credit for that, because to do that type of defending, you have to trust the fellas around you, that you can actually go, we call it balls out for it, because yeah. you know in the back of your mind one of your mates is going to come and cover you. And my thing is always with football, if my mate covers me this time, I'm going to burst my arse to get back and cover him the next time. And it just filters through the team, that confidence, that trust in each other. I think that's what they've built up with this year. And like from an attacking point of view, I think it was mentioned there how Peter Hart looks like he's enjoying his football. I think it has been a case of you go mark your man, you do your job there. But when we're on the ball, you play your own game. You do what you're good at. And that seems to be the case for all the defenders. And they do, like, look, it's just hard to criticise the way they've played for previous years, but they do look like a team that are just enjoying their football. They take a few more chances with the ball. They're a bit more open, a bit more expansive, and that, that comes with enjoying your football. So what I think they've brought this year to the group is obviously there's, there's always a big trust there, but there's a huge trust there that they can go out and push the boundaries, but go a bit more attacking because their buddies or their teammates are there to bail them out but as individuals it probably just build, brings a bit of confidence when you see some of the scores that the defenders are kicking sure they're phenomenal like yeah um shane keely here on youtube saying ulster championship is the best about there would have been three ulster teams in the semi-finals if it was an open draw obviously no way of knowing that but i think it does it does point to the fact that like tyrone had an unbelievably they had the hardest route by a mile they beat the current ulster champions obviously they beat donegal beat monaghan brilliant monaghan team then Kerry and, and and Mayo in the final in a in a straight knockout championship. That's an unbelievable route, Stephen. Like they really did earn this. I know there was a lot of messing in the middle, I suppose, with everything that went on with COVID and the fact that they were technically out of the championship, withdrawn from the championship a couple of weeks ago, which is mad in itself. But when you take it from start to finish, this is a this is as good in all Ireland as thrown of one out of all the four. Oh yeah, I I I I totally concur with that. I know a lot of you know, a lot of maybe commentary that I saw and heard maybe last night around it. Oh, geez, was it a good final or whatever? I mean, you know, Tyrone have absolutely earned um, this game. And, you know, and they scored well uh, over the period. Like, you know, 16 scores, 214 yesterday. And, um, you know, big score against three goals against um, against Kerry. Um, and, and, you know, they're absolutely deserving uh, Ulster and and... Uh, all Ireland champions, and you know that, that that's been a it's been a windy path for them. And um, again, like you know, I back up what Darren said there. That trust, to see, there looks a great spurt in that group. Yeah, they're 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 a good bunch to be able to um, you know uh, create the the siege mentality. Um, they use the COVID element, I'm sure, to to get another couple of percent out of that. And and fair play to them. I mean they. They, uh, there's a great spirit in that. It's evident in how they play, but you can see it. You know, listen to Kieran McGeary last night. Listen to Peter Hart. Um, the real joy and um, you know, bubbliness in in, in how they're ta talking. Uh, and and look, maybe that's quite obvious when you when you when, when you lift Sam McGuire. But um, I don't think you know, even in the lead up, you know, to the, the, their media night, some of the the vibes you were getting out of that was that these lads were loving their summer, mm. and um, you know. Uh, I don't think anybody can 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 take away, or I don't think it's fair anyway for anybody to, you know, there'll be some comparisons around this team versus the the, the Brian Dewar and the, the Stephen O'Neill and the Sean Kavanagh. I don't think that's totally unfair. Um, this team have have rolled up the sleeve and they've earned everything they've got this year. But it is a team that can grow, Darren. You're talking about 15 good footballers. They're not exactly old either. You know, you're probably talking about Matty Donnelly, and, you know, maybe P.D. Hart, as people are probably on the end of their career. Niall Morgan's been there for a long time. The rest of the lads, either in their prime or coming into it, you'd look at somebody like Conor McKenna is going to improve. You've got Cotton McShane to come back into that team. Dara Canavan, you know, developing and coming off injury. Uh, you know, Darren McCurry playing to his strength. And that's just the forwards that I'm talking about. You know, this is all over the field. This is a team that, you know, it's so such a basic, stupid question to ask about the All-Ireland champions. But considering they kind of came from nowhere, it doesn't look like this is a flash in the pan team. No, and as we said, look, this is the management team's first year. They're still in a bit of transition. And not only, like, winning, obviously, adds a bit of excitement around the county, but winning the way they've done it this year, which has been, I suppose, been like night and day to the way they've played in previous years, 
if you're a young lad in Tyrone, like obviously your dream is to play for Tyrone, but when you see the way they're playing now, and like Stephen said, the scores they were racking up this year, which they weren't doing previously, it's an exciting team to be part of. It's a team where mm-hmm. you're allowed to express yourself, where you're allowed to go out and enjoy it and play, play free-flowing football as well as do the hard work. And it is a kind of, you work hard for us, we leave you play ball, you know. Um, so it's only the start of the journey for them. Um, like I, t- I said, going into the final, the best thing about it for me was, it was a, like from take off to Kerry Head, there was no Dublin, there was no Kerry. People were writing. They weren't really talking about Tyrone at the start. They weren't really talking about Mayo because Killian was out. You had two teams. I actually thought it was a great final. Um, it was end to end. Yeah, there was missed chances and stuff, but you're going to have that in the final. It's not going to be score, score, score. I thought it was brilliant. It was like from a neutral point of view watching it. It was two teams going for it. Yeah, I think Mayo will come away thinking we played much better in finals before. But Tyrone, I think, will feel individually a couple of their players didn't play up to scratch either and mm. um, so it was one that that's an all Ireland final there's nerves there's pressure but from a football point of view and going forward I just think it's going to make the next couple of years very exciting yeah Stephen I don't think Mayo want to be making excuses or anything like that but I just haven't heard it mentioned is there anything in like the fact that Throne played an extra time thriller against Kerry two weeks ago and um Mayo hadn't played in four weeks you know, that like that there was just that little bit of maybe that bit of match practice that was there for that last 20 minutes. No, I don't think so. Genuinely don't think so. Um, I think, you know, in, in, in many ways, uh, a less than four week period wouldn't have probably got Ushi Mullen back. Um, I think they needed also the time to, to process the win against mm. Dublin. It was, it, it was, I suppose, there was a lot of talk or hype, uh, you know, nationally around around that. So there was a there was a, a case of, of of you know allowing them to get back to ground zero and you know build a focus towards Tyrone. Um, I think they'll be disappointed in certain aspects of of the game from yesterday, though, in relation to that they they did some things well. I think if you looked at the the phase of play through the the the, the free kick that, that they got just before half time, that maybe there was a, a question mark around was it a penalty? No, and I think Joe McQuillan got that absolutely right. Um, but in that, they changed up the wrangles of running. Fellas came in support, and that just did not happen enough um, at the last day. And and I think you know if, if you're going to try and move these guys around in Tyrone, that's what 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 um, Mayo needed to do. And and they had the opportunity of seeing that against you know what Tyrone brought to that Kerry game, and they had the two week lead in to to get that right. But they just didn't get it consistently enough in the play. In the second half, as the game kind of went on, it felt to me anyway like Throne were more in charge. Obviously, a penalty could have changed things. It would have put them ahead, etc. But it just felt to me that Throne were kind of somewhat in control and, and didn't take their own chances, I think, in the third quarter that could have stretched away. It felt to me during that time that Mayo started maybe taking pot shots or maybe just it's slightly getting away from them. Do you, one, agree with that or two? Is it like, is that a mentally getting away from us or is it a being worn down by Tyrone not letting us do what we need to do yeah well, I think that there was there, there's one play there that that I think um you know Tyrone tried to break in for a goal chance and I think maybe uh someone tried to bring in Matty Donnelly or Darren McCurry over the top and, and Oshie Mullen intercepted we came all the way up the field yeah. Tommy Tommy Conroy broke inside and I think probably back now we're looking at, at he probably would say, oh, give me that chance again. I'd tip it over the bar and get the game. I think the game would have been level uh, with mm-hmm. that. Obviously, it goes in the back of the net. It lifts the crowd, the team, or the front foot. But I think at a time in which hurting Tyrone and laying the, the, the necessary gloves on them, you know, they're, they're not the team that usually cough up the ball easy. And to punish them at the far end, it would have been a great score to get. And I think with the way Tyrone play. Like they did cough up opportunities. Mayo will have opportunities and they'll look at, you know, Conor Loftus shot off the, the line. Um, obviously, the penalty, the Tommy Conroy chance that we spoke about. Brian Welch had a great chance on uh, on the right-hand side. Yeah. And then what happened is because they didn't happen, players were probably taking on themselves that they had to try and make it happen. And they were trying stuff that hadn't been part of the pattern. Now, I know Conor Loftus had two poor wides from distance. At the same time, he got one just before half time against Dublin that kept them in the game. So you know you're 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 damned if you do and you're damned mm. if you don't. And certainly when when the 
when when those wides were going from distance, I think that played totally into Tyrone's hand and allowed them to take the the terms of engagement for the rest of the game. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Darren, there's a there's a a, it's a weird kind of sense with this Mayo team because you've got Aidan O'Shea, you've got Kevin McLaughlin and like especially Lee Keegan who was just so good yesterday, you know, and you don't know how many years these guys have left them or how many times they can go back to the well and you don't replace someone like Lee Keegan, right, if, if he does step aside or if he in any way gets, you know, not not as effective as such with age. But at the same time, the majority of this team, we've talked about it all year, aren't the guys that were there in 2012 against Donegal. It's a new team. And for these guys, they've just played in two All-Ireland finals in a row. And really, it's after two years of the development of this new team. There's a real chance for Mayo, in a way, to kind of kick on from this, isn't it? If what we have in that um, in that replacement era, you know, has been as... It's, it's worked out so far, is what I'm trying to say. And if you can replace Lee Keegan and Aidan O'Shea over time, this has a, it has a chance to not drop at all there for Mayo and for them to stay in that shout each and every year. Yeah, I think like in terms of Lee Keegan, you have one of the the greats, not only just Mayo, GA, like he's just, he's phenomenal. Geez, even yesterday, there were times when they needed it and he was one driving out, he was one kicking the big scores, he was the one, he went on McCurry and when O'Hora was uh, struggling. Um, he's just phenomenal. You don't like you don't replace fellas like that, like for like. You'll bring in somebody else and they'll do a job. They'll never replace someone like yeah. that. Um, and like that, if, if anything, they're, they're probably overachieving at the moment because they lost so many good players, very good players, sorry, and they brought in these younger lads. Um, my fear going into the game the last year was it would come down to the last quarter. And when you need a couple of scores, I just personally, I felt when the wides were coming or the goal chance were coming, it was like another chipping away at the confidence and would that self-belief be there or would it be a case of oh no not again um i think that's the way it is so look i think mayo they're not going anywhere they're not going anywhere they're going to come back i think the big thing is for me i don't think the likes of lee keegan mclaughlin or o'shea will go anywhere my big thing with aiden is can they find a position for him i just don't know where they're playing i just think he has all the attributes to be such um have such an impact on every game and I've I've never felt that he's been used correctly. He's I couldn't even tell you where he plays most of He's inside, he's on the 40s around midfield. And there's no structure to it. I think if you can find it, like first half of the game, he started slowly and then they started popping ball. He's not a fellow who actually catches too much over his head. They were popping bouncing ball in front of him. And if you if you get that understanding with lighter fellas, quick fellas, which Mayo have now, that he could be the ball when you pop it, there's endless opportunities. And I think it is a, a tweak. In how they play, mm. that they have, like they go from, they're very much a running team, but they need to change it up more. They need to use the players that are there and the, qu- the qualities that they have. Um, so I think if the likes of Aiden is to stay on, they need to find a way that keeps them in the game more often. Too often, yes, in other big games, he has moments and then he disappears because the style of play isn't suiting him. And I'm not saying they tweak everything for Aiden, but he's such, he has such a big game mentality he's a big player for them he's a leader in the group they have to find a way to keep him on the ball because when you have a fella like that and he's been kept out of the game like a leader that's oxygen to the opposition as well yeah yeah he did set up scores and win freeze four scores in the first half but i i completely see darren's point Stephen. it's it's just an ongoing question that's been going on for a long time like i mean this is one of those unique players for our team and I think there's far too much focus on him from outside sometimes really unfairly but at the same time Mayo needed to be getting a little bit more out of Aiden O'Shea and be that the the way it was set up or his own performance they just needed a little more from from some a leader like that yesterday especially when you consider that Mayo's best ever forward they made this All-Ireland final with you know a, another once in a lifetime player in Killian O'Connor gone for the season and not being part of things you know yeah, well, I, th- I think uh, I actually thought that Aiden had um, was actually uh, quite good in the first half. I thought he was winning a lot of first phase ball, primary ball off Rona McNamee when he went inside. Um, but we didn't get the runners, you know, as, as, as Darren was saying, there are a couple of those lighter lads. I, I think he was trying to say if, he, if we had a, a, a young Darren O'Sullivan running off on that sort of pace and, and bounce, you know, we would have had opportunities. But I go back to that example that I just said there, just before half time that created that free. That's actually what came off. We had a, a 
a ball in towards Aiden, you know, we had a phase or two off, runner coming off, and someone had Park Ora changed another angle, and we got in it. But we didn't do that enough. We didn't we didn't get Kevin running off, and we didn't get Connor Loftus running off, and Brian Welch, Jermuth, and um, you know, we didn't get it. You know, the running was always going to be just coming uh, from Paddy Dirk and Lee and, and Ushi Mullen, um, and you know, as the game wore on, that only seemed to really come from 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 Lee. Paddy Durkin was, was was being, you know, being really well marshaled by uh, by Conor Myler. Obviously, uh, Matty Ruan had given us that in the in, in the semi final in previous games. He was being done by Kilpatrick. But you know, people tend to look at the the big six foot four guy and place a lot of blame and emphasis on him. And you know, he's the the team captain. But you know, it's. You know, I think people that aren't invested in it, you know, probably don't realise that it's never about one guy. Um, mm-hmm. It's, you know, I think others needed to to play off him. Um, he isn't a prolific scorer, as you, you see. Like, there's no comparison as regards um, scoring uh, without a Killian in, in, in that team. And and if Killian had, had been available, maybe they would have they would have gone with Aiden in midfield. And I think probably that might be something that James will look at in the second half, that maybe... They should have tried to match up Aiden maybe off Brian Kennedy um, and, and maybe jazz it up a little bit, but maybe moving Jirma to the edge of the square and, you know, maybe maybe to, to, to look and see if that would have, uh, un, not, I won't quite say unnerved um, Tyrone because they're very comfortable with what they do, but maybe just pose a different question to them um, because I don't, I don't think we got enough out of Aiden in the second half, surely. But I think his first half... Give us a bit of a template around if we could have had just just those runners coming off him, and it's very unlike Mayo not to have had those runners, but probably as a reflection of how well Tyrone were doing in the middle third, stopping those guys. Before we go, Stephen, the last ten years now, it's like it's six All Ireland finals in ten years, four or the other four years, three semi finals, two of them were replays. You were involved three of those years, two All Ireland finals, won a replay defeat. You're not making this easy, Mick. No, I'm not. No, I suppose my question is like, this is an unbelievable record without the last thing. Do Mayo people take any solace whatsoever in the fact that they have been the second best team in the country, maybe, or whatever it might be, or up there with the top two or three teams in the country for so long for a county like Mayo to have such consistency? It's an amazing record. And it, it, it's such a. It's such almost a pain that the narrative always has to be that Mayo don't win the final because they've come up against good teams in the finals as well. Yeah, the um, look, you know, I, I think there may have been a little bit of that going back to 1989, 96, 97, and maybe in the the, the, the teams in the noughties because there wasn't the level of consistency hmm. whereby this team, and in fairness to, to James, he, he, he took over having the team been beaten by Sligo and Longford um, and he, you know, he really stripped it back, you know, brought in a, a, a great strength and condition team under Ed Cockler, put a great medical team in place, great coaching team, you know, with Keen O'Neill and Donny Buckley over the years. And he, he built a real good um, system in there. And, and, you know, you know, my period there built, you know, was, you know, benefited from, from a, a good foundation that, that he put in place. Um, but but definitely there is no um, comfort in in being second best. Uh, absolutely not. That team, I can tell you, th- those boys will, you know, they, they, they take absolutely no comfort in that. And I think you know that that genuinely the vast majority of of, of Mayo supporters um, don't see it like that anymore. Um, you know, they're I won't say that they're quite as as harsh as the. The, the, the supporters down down um, Darren's way, but um, you know they they'll be you know they'll be asking questions that they of why we didn't do this and how come he didn't do that and you know that that's just the space that maybe we're in now with social media and all that um, that you're, you're you're going to get a lot more of the the, the feedback right 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 between the eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Darren, I suppose from an outsider's perspective, though, I, I can understand that, and I wouldn't expect anybody in Mayo to take solace from that record, but history will put these down, especially, except for maybe Dubs messing, history will put this Mayo team down as, like, genuinely, it's the best team to ever not never win in All-Ireland, for sure, but it, it, it's going to go down as one of the, the best football teams. You're, you're killing Stephen with these comments. 
I've, I've tried to this build up another, my own to make him feel better. This is another this. Dublin uh, element of, yeah. uh, of death by a thousand cuts here. Uh, I'm a Clare man with a Dublin accent, Stephen. I don't know anything about football. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, look, I genuinely look like they're not going to take any solace in it. They're not. It's just Stephen hits a nail on the head. It's about winning the games. Unfortunately, whether it be luck or just one of them things, it's just like they are incredible team they have had an incredible team for a long period of time and for whatever reason they've just not been able to get over line i don't think they're going to take any solace in it individually a lot of these players will go down as some of the greatest that mayo ever produce some of them will go down as some of the greatest ga players um just thinking of lee there and killian o'connor you know what they've done in the game but look i've been there i've been lucky enough i've won but i've i've lost a lot as well and people don't forget when you lose um, yeah. they won't like when you look at the record books you look at the winners and as harsh as that is, as that is that's that realistic and uh, that's that's the real world you look at the winners and sure look i know a lot of the mayo lads have played against them i played with a few of them in college and stuff like that and great guys mm. do they deserve would i say they deserve to win one of course they do but that's just not sport no. and um, i think steven's right you can sugarcoat it all you want it doesn't change anything last question then lads there's uh two teams in the all Ireland final you know it is a, a unique pairing in the all Ireland final the six in a row was over i think all four teams who lost or were in the semi-finals this year will all fancy their chances next year we don't know whether the dubs are going to kind of come back or, or revitalize in some way but definitely the other three and you'll have the likes of monaghan saying we're not that far off we're as good as tyrone you'll have Donegal thinking that way as well who knows if Galway can, you know, kind of step it up. You know, e even teams like me who would have said, like, they're making progress, et cetera, et cetera. Is there a sense that the six in a row being over, someone like it not being Kerry who takes over, Stephen, importantly as well, that there's another team that Throne have come in, they beat May on the final. Is there a sense that we might have some kind of a more open era that there might be, it, it's up for grabs every year that counties will take solace from a final like yesterday's? Yeah, no, I, I think you're 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 dead right. I think though, um, part of that might might also be a little bit obscured by a knockout championship. Yeah, uh, and if we revert to um, you know, backdoor, you you may still look to see you know those those two or three teams that have typically um dominated uh, uh all Ireland final appearances over the last decade or so. But I think you're right, the, and an Armagh were a team there. Mick, you didn't, didn't mention, I think they're certainly another one that are on the up, upward curve. And in that, though, you know, you, you, we've named probably eight, eight or ten teams that on their day, you know, could probably beat each other. Um, Dublin, I, I, I would say, you know, will go away and lick their wounds this winter. And um, they're certainly not going away, and no, nobody suggests that they are. Um, but, you know, everybody will, will, will see a team like Tyrone. I, I, I would love to know had anybody Tyrone picked to, to their back to, to, to win the All Ireland, um, and fair play to him this morning or her uh, that has done that. But um, that that also will give give people hope, and and you know that's what that that's what everyone you know when they lace up their boots next November and December and get back into their pre season that it's with hope and you know desire to 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 get to an All Ireland final, win your provincial, get to the All Ireland final, and give it your best and. Um, yeah, I think they're the. They, I know over the last uh, six, seven years, we've all been grasping at the straws to see our Dublin coming back to the to the pack, or are we mm. all getting closer. But but I think there's no doubt that 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 it's it's much more a pack now, right? Dublin's still in the, in at the the right side of that pack, but it is much more a pack now. I think than 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 we have seen it before. Absolutely, yeah. So something to look forward to for 2022 for a lot of counties and not just not just the Dubs this time. But uh, Stephen Rocher, thanks a million for joining us today. I know it's not the easiest thing to come on a few hours after uh, watching your county uh, lose an All-Ireland final, but uh, thanks so much for joining us. And Darren, thanks for everything, of obviously, today and throughout the year as well. Um, it's been brilliant uh, spending the football summer with you. Cheers, Mick. Cheers, lads. Thanks a million to the guys there. Um, lots more to come as well. We're going to speak to Morris and Mark, reconvene the old podcast for another uh, post-mortem slash celebration of yesterday in just a second. But don't forget to, um, if you're watching on YouTube, please do subscribe to the channel. We're here with you every week.